If you've perused the wiki a lot, you've probably seen these. The NPC ID numbers. Basically, these are the static numbers used to refer to each NPC type within the code of the game, starting from ID 1, the blue slime, all the way to ID 687, the mystic frog. However, the more perceptive of you might have noticed these as well, the negative NPC ID numbers. Yeah, NPC IDs don't just count upwards as new NPCs are added, but special negative IDs exist too. They're used as aliases for variants of enemies, like how the purple slime's ID negative 7 is just an alias that spawns a blue slime with stronger stats in a different color, or how the small Twiggy zombie is just a smaller and lower HP version of the regular Twiggy zombie. In total, there are 65 of these NPC variants, all size, stat, and or color scaled versions of their original counterparts. All assigned a negative ID, presumably for easier development. All of this is somewhat well known, but what is less well known are the negative item IDs. To find them, you'll have to look into the Terraria source code. In the item ID class, you'll find that item IDs negative 48 through negative 1 are used for quote, old versions of the metal pickaxes, axes, hammers, bows, and swords, as well as old versions of all the phase sabers. While they are still in the game, unlike their actively used NPC counterparts, these negative ID items seem to be completely deprecated from the game, with absolutely no way to obtain them. If you spawn them via an inventory editor or server command, you get an item that functions exactly like the new version of the item it's replacing, and if you save and exit, it gets replaced with the new version. Basically, in modern Terraria, these items are not only unobtainable, but unstable. That makes you wonder, why were these added and what were they used for, and when were they removed and deprecated? Clearly it has something to do with legacy versions of Terraria, given their naming in the source code, but for what reason would Relogic remake a bunch of mundane basic weapons and tools? Well, the answer lies in these. Sprites. Before 1.3, sprites in Terraria were a lot more basic. It's programmer art, if you will. One aspect of this was recoloring. Back then, all metal item sprites, bows, swords, pickaxes, etc. were just straight recolors of the appropriate tool or weapon made of iron. You can see this in the fact that every tool's shape is the same, and also in the tool's different handle colors. Since the recolor tint filter affects the whole sprite, the handles change color too. As all of these items are basically just versions of the same item, just with different tints and stats, Realogic probably thought it was best to include these as sub-items, separate from standard items. And so, negative item IDs were born. Just like the negative NPC IDs assigned to modified variants of existing NPCs, negative item IDs were assigned to modified variants of existing items. These copper, silver, and gold tools occupied the first 18 negative item IDs until phase savers were introduced in 1.1. Each phase saber had literally the exact same sprite as the corresponding phase blade, and as each phase saber is just a stat buffed copy of their corresponding phase blade, Relogic decided to use variants for that too. And bam, another 6 negative ID items were added. The last 24 negative ID items were added in version 1.2, when the alternate pre hardened ores, tin, lead, tungsten, and platinum were added. Just like your non-alternate brethren, these ores tools were just recolors too, and as such they got their negative IDs. In total, Terraria ended up with 48 of these negative ID variant items, added presumably to save time. But, their time was not long. Version 1.3 caused a downfall for most of these negative ID items. With the big update, Relogic decided to give unique sprites to all the old metal tools and weapons, with the sparkles and actually brown handles and all. So the variants and recolors had to go. Every metal tool and weapon was upgraded to be its own item, and thus have its own sprite not just a recolor of some other sprite. You can see that this was done in 1.3 by the tool's item ID numbers. There are around 3,500 next to all the other 1.3 editions like Solar Die and the Stardust Dragon Staff. This is unusual. Normally, basic stuff like this would be in the early 100s as they were added earlier, even at release. But these items were only upgraded in 1.3, so they have rather late item ID numbers even if they were introduced much earlier. Something similar happened to phase sabers in 1.3.2, but for a different reason. Apparently there was a bug where phase sabers placed on weapon racks would be unbreakable, so they fixed it by just making phase sabers a different item. You can tell they did this when they said that, quote, This fix is not retroactive and will not fix old worlds impacted by the issue. Making new phase sabers only affects future phase sabers and those that will be updated in the inventory, so existing bug weapon racks would be left unaffected with a legacy phase saber. Instead of just being stat buffed copies, phase sabers were upgraded into their own set of items. Relogic also conveniently decided to make the hidden change of giving them sprites this update as well, finally bringing them to the 1.3 standard. 
I guess it was time for that anyway, and it must have been nice to finally deprecate this old feature. With that, every item got its sprite and no item remained as a variant any longer. Negative item IDs found themselves in use from 1.1 to 1.3.2, although they're still technically in the game for legacy support reasons. In case someone wants to bring a pre-1.3.2 character into a modern version of Terraria, the game needs to be able to interpret and update these old items properly. Without any item variants in the game, there's no reason to reintroduce them, but they remain an interesting and extremely obscure part of Terraria's history. Hello, if you enjoyed, consider subscribing as only about a quarter of you are. Similar videos are on the left and right. Either way though, thank you for watching, and good day, and goodbye. See you next week.